So why don't you guys come? So why don't you guys come on in? I'm gonna show you a little bit about my bookshelves. So let's go ahead and actually start here. So these bookshelves are antiques. I've had these for uh, five, six years. I actually bought them when I bought my first house uh, in Orlando, Florida. I bought them in an antique store uh, down in Orlando and they've traveled with me all the way out here to California. They're very, very special. Now, each bookshelf has an interesting um, setup and as you can tell, as you'll see th from the rest of the room, um, I outgrew these bookshelves probably four years ago. So in my library alone, last time I counted, I probably have somewhere close to four or 500 books. Uh, so yeah, the books are overflowing everywhere. Um, so in this first bookshelf here, this is kind of like a combo of hypnosis, business, and marketing. If we start looking down here, these is, this is kind of the business section. Down here, these are books I don't go to too often just because you, you kind of read them and you're done with them. And so I have some like autobiographies here. Um, Ray Dalio's Principles is a great book. Um, but then there's some like books that I want to have access to because it's right next to my desk. You know, I want to just be able to grab when I need them. So like words that sell. This is a simple book that actually when you look through it, it gives you words to use when it comes to certain. So having access to books like this is, is important for me. Um, as you go up, these are more, you know, some more business and marketing books that I, I prefer to use or have access to a little more often. Uh, you know, Crossing the Chasm, this is a classic book. I think every business and market, business person and marketer should own. You can see how many times I've bookmarked it, quite a lot actually. Um, but the grandfather of this book, if you want to get something a little bit more academic and heavier, is Diffusions of Innovations. Um, and of course, you know, I have a lot of uh, classics in here, The Immutable Laws of Marketing, um, you know, and of course, uh, some newer things, you know, and there's, there's sort of, sort of peppered through here a lot of self-development books. The Magic of Thinking Big, Think and Grow Rich, you know, some Ryan Holiday books. Uh, this is a classic book, uh, High Output Management by Andy, A Andrew S. Grove. He was the uh, president and chairman of, uh, of Intel, and he's the one who actually came, came up or introduced the whole concept of OKRs. Uh, as we start moving up, this is a really interesting shelf. So this is a really interesting shelf. Um, because here we have, you know, some marketing books like, you know, Friction and everything. You also have some psychology books like Persuasion, Influence by Robert Cialdini, Daniel Kahneman's work. Some really interesting ones over here. I have more like these hypnosis books. So uh, Richard Band uh, Bandler, who is really uh, the father, one of the big fathers of uh, neurolinguistic programming. Um, the uh, Monsters and Magical Sticks this is another hypnosis book. I just think it's a great title. Um, and of course some other really fantastic books. I really pride myself on having a great combination of old books, some of which are unpublished, but also some newer books that I think are really valuable. Like uh, there's a fantastic book down here on advertising that I, you know, again, it's hard to find good books on marketing, but this is another one that I think is great. It's called The Advertising Effect by Adam Ferrier. So this is a great book that gets into, you know, a lot of psychology of advertising. Um, you know, in, in here, you know, this is my junk uh, 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 section. Not junk in terms of the books, but just I put a lot of stuff in here again. I'm overflowing with books. See, I even have books like these old novels I've had since I was a kid. Moving over here, you know, throughout my library, I like to have what I call um, uh, uh, objects of curiosity. So we have the Sputnik lamp here. We have a, a sextant, which is used for map making. I bought this from an antique store. These are some novels I've had since I was a kid. Um, and again, more really interesting book. This is a really interesting section here. So this right here, this is my microscope from the time I was about five years old. You know, these are some really interesting books. Again, getting more into psychology. We have, uh, a, you know, some stuff here by Newman, uh, Carl Rogers by Young. And then some really interesting books on, on again, human evolutionary psychology. So we have, of course, some Sigmund Freud. We have uh, The Moral Animal. This is a great book. My, my wife got this actually for my for the first birthday that we celebrated together in America. It's called Persuasive Technology. This is by B.J. Fogg. So B.J. Fogg is a professor of uh, psychology and his lab um, actually gave birth to a lot of really persuasive technology, specifically in the app world. So that's actually a really good book. And again, I, I love collecting old books that a lot of people may not be aware of. So of course, um, Eddie Bernays, he's the father essentially of not exactly propaganda, but PR and public relations. So I have his books here. Um, Marshall McLuhan, you know, the, the man who said the medium is the message. I have some of his books. So like here, the Gutenberg Galaxy. Now, 
a lot of my books, I, I write in them. I'm trying to be better not to write in the older books, but sometimes I do. You know, I really don't care. But like, this is a first edition of the Gutenberg Galaxy. I remember when I found this, this book probably goes for like five or $600 now, but I bought it for like 20 bucks, so that was good. Let's, let's see. Now, in this section of the library, I have some really occult and let's say controversial books in here. That's why I hide them in here. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but maybe I'll show you a few. So let's open this. I'm not gonna open it all the way, but let me show you, let me show you some books in here. So, so here, here's a really good book. I can recommend this book. I can't show you all the books in here. Uh, this is called The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind by Gustave Le Bon. And this book was originally published back in, I think it was the 1800s. Yeah, 1895. So this essentially talks about the mind of a crowd. Now, why is this a controversial book? Well, I don't know if it's exactly controversial, but uh, Mussolini, Hitler, and Stalin all read this book. They were very much influenced by it. Let's put that back. Let's see if I can show you a couple more. Um, this book, this is a this is a very unique find actually. So I have this book called The Complete Dictionary of Symbols. So you can, you know, see in this book there's a lot of really interesting uh, things in here. And again, it's it's a, it's dictionary symbols. Why is this such an interesting book? Well, I bought this book for thirty dollars on Amazon because a publisher was trying to sell it. It's like a small library. Bought it for thirty dollars. The hardcover actually goes for about eight hundred dollars on Amazon. Eight or at nine hundred dollars. And I'll show you one more book. Maybe this is not so controversial, but uh, this is a really cool book of John. It's just too big for me to hold. Uh, have up here just doesn't fit, unfortunately. But this is Man and His Symbols again. Really nice, beautiful book that I have. Oh, and of course, um, I have a, you know, every library needs some scotch in it. So I have a Ardbert's Cory Vrecken in there anytime I want. Now, let's look over here real quick. So in this part of the of my library, if you look down here, you know, I always believe that it's good to do some physical exercise in the library, at least have something there. So we have a Theragun here, which is a nice percussive instrument. We have some rollers to roll your back on. I have these things for my morning workout, for my uh, uh, push-ups. And of course, I have a kettlebell. So anytime I want when, throughout the day, whenever let's say I'm reading, I think it's a great idea to sort of condition and train your mind and the body at the same time. So I have these down here. Um, down here, you know, this is my, these are, this is more of the medical and let's say history and science section. So my father's old uh, medical bag, we have a lot of books on medicine and history down here. Okay. So here we have a lot of really interesting books, combination of like, let's say ec economics and finance and history and stuff like, you know, so there's some books here such as, you know, a lot of Michael Lewis books. I, I got these two interesting books. One is American Desperado. This is about uh, a guy who's in the Mexican mafia and then about face by Colonel a uh, Hackworth, which is, uh, I believe is Jocko Willink's one of his favorite books. And I got these hard covers and I think they're first editions, which is exciting. Up here in this one, again, like everything's falling out. But we got a lot of like old textbooks that I have from medical school. Sometimes, you know, it does pay, like, you know, this medical physiology book, this is not gonna go out of print. Um, so it's good to have some of these. But I have some other really interesting books in here. Like I bought my this textbook one year, David M. Buss, uh, Evolutionary Psychology. I even have this classic textbook on uh, contemporary advertising. So, you know, I love old textbooks and books. So get those back in there, close that. And then up here again, we have, you know, some more books, you know, on history and, and, and whatnot. So I have, uh, you know, some of Robert Greene's books, The Art of War, of course. Um, I'm a huge fan of Eric Hoffer. Eric Hoffer was a long, uh, longshoreman who lived and worked in San Francisco, and he wrote about a lot of interesting topics in politics. He wrote this one book, uh, which is somewhere around here, called The True Believer, um, which talks about uh, crowd psychology and what uh, you know the Nazis did and Hitler did to essentially make people uh, fanatical. So anytime I come across these books, I buy them. Uh, so these are two uh, small editions of a book. Uh, one is The Passion of Mind, one is uh, The True Believer. And again, uh, when I come across his books, I I'm kind of a collector, so I always buy his books. Uh, of course, the famous uh, Nicholas uh, Taleb. Um, I bought his uh, very nice Inserto gift set, which is really beautiful. I'm quite proud of these because they're they're really nice set. Um, and then again, we have a lot of really interesting books in here, like the Gulag Archipelago, Chimpanzee Politics, 
which is an interesting one. And Newt Gingrich actually said that that actually influenced his career the most. And Newt Gingrich is pretty successful as a politician. Whether you like him or not, you can, we can all admit that he was a very successful politician. Okay, so, and throughout my home, you know, I have a lot of interesting things like uh, this statue here. Again, a lot of objects of curiosity. Over here, this is a really cool area. As you can see from the ground that I have, I have a lot of books get overflowing and these books range from, you know, medicine to business, psychology. There's just books all over the place. Um, but this is a nice little area my wife and I, we've made, and this is kind of like a little meditation area. So in the mornings, uh, I wake up rather early. I come here, I kick my slippers off and I sit, do my meditation. And the nice thing is that I have a variety of books here um, that I like to read. So the one thing I love is Daily Stoic by uh, Ryan Holiday. It gives you like a stoic lesson each day. I've had this book since like, gosh, no, 2018. But then, you know, there's a lot of great books here like uh, Anthony DeMello's uh, Awareness. We have Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. You know, a lot of really nice books. And of course, um, we have, you know, other books here on like health and, and, and fitness. So we have a lot of other books here on like health and fitness in it as well. Um, we have uh, Boundless by Ben Greenfield, The 4-Hour Body. So this is kind of like a, like a, a healthy living slash mental uh, uh, meditation area, if you want to call it that. But the other thing I do want to show you is I also, this is my largest book, oh, which is massive. I think it's like 20 or 30 pounds. But this is uh, Seth Godin's uh, book called uh, What Does It Sound Like to Change Your Mind? It is a beautiful book. Uh, as you can see, it's got all his blogs, a lot of beautiful pictures, and the nice thing about it is, you know, this was in a limited edition run, and so I'm a big fan of Seth. Uh, I went through his, one of his programs, and I've had an email correspondence with him from time to time. So it really meant a lot for me to go and support him in his work. And then the cool part is, on one of these pages, he actually lists my name as a contributor. Well, not to the book, really, but the support of his work. But it's just kind of cool. So that's, uh, again, the biggest book that I own. And, you know, of course, it's nice because we have a nice breeze. You know, the window's right here. And then right above me, I have this very old antique tapestry. My friend Ashley actually bought it for me a long time ago when I moved into my first home. So I like keeping this little Courage uh, tapestry over my head. It's just not kind of a nice, nice thing to have in a library. Okay, so now over here, in this part of the room, we have more books, of course. So now this gentleman right here, this is a very special guy. Can you say hello to everybody? This is Mr. Pancake. This is not my cat, but uh, he is a neighborhood cat that we decided to let in and he's little by little kind of taking over this area. This is his uh, crab uh, bed sheets and then he decides he likes to come up here like a little mountain lion. Oh, he tired, huh? But you know, I think it's nice. Uh, I don't know about dogs uh, or cats. I don't like the hair. But you know, cats are kind of nice in the library because they kind of keep to themselves. They hang out, so it's kind of nice when I sit down, I read, and talk to him. You know, around here, I have a lot of like uh, really interesting artwork that I've uh, collected over the years. Uh, here we have the uh, cognitive bias codex. You know, which kind of gives you all the cognitive biases that you find in the mind. Really interesting. Um, this is a picture, uh, some old stone tablets from uh, the time of the Sumerians. Beautiful picture of my wife, of course, who's videotaping. Thank you. And then a lot of other interesting art. Uh, if you look down here, as you can see, let's go down here for a second. Um, I ran out of bookshelf space like two years ago, so I need new bookshelves. Um, so we have a lot of books here, you know, lining the ground. I have a lot of books on business, a lot of really really interesting books down here I'll show you some of the things I keep close to the couch that I'm really uh, starting to read and get into so laws of human nature is by Robert Green really good book on strategy seven powers the foundations of business strategy I just got this book as my as a gift for my birthday impossible to ignore from DDM and Sinan thank you guys um, I have a leadership retreat coming up so I've been checking out uh, measure what matters by John Dewar this is about OKRs of course Great book on chess by Bobby Fischer. I have a lot of uh, other really interesting books. Uh, this book is no longer published, I think. This book from my buddy Jack. Striking Thoughts by Bruce Lee. So again, you know, the one thing I can tell you about my library, which I recommend for most people, is when you set up a library, like yes, you know, if you want to have it look nice and everything and pretty, 
you know, yeah, get your bookshelves, keep them all in there. But I think the function of a library is that in every corner of the room, you know, have some interesting books lying there so that, you know, perhaps maybe you're not in the mood to read a business book, maybe you want to read a novel or something. So you can sit down at any point in time, pick up a book at random and start reading, reading from it. The mistake that people make is that if you, you know, you're supposed to read one book at a time. If you think about, uh, you know, watching TV, we don't watch the same channel every single time. Maybe you find a series that you get really into, but you jump around between channels depending on what you're in the mood for. It's the same thing with books. Okay, stand up. All right, come over here. So of course, along the uh, back of the uh, couch, we have a lot of different books lining up here. Uh, so then, you know, over here, we of course have even more books. You can come over here and just see, we have all kinds of books down here. here let me show you some really interesting books that we got here. So um, Eugene Schwartz wrote uh, one of the most uh, sophisticated books in marketing called uh, Breakthrough Advertising. So I actually got a few of his other books. So How to Double Your Power to Learn and Mail Order, because that was something that um, he was really big into, which is uh, direct mail uh, business. I have a lot of fantastic books here. The Business of Venture Capital is probably the best book on, on venture capitalism that you can buy by Mahendra uh, Masingani. Mas Mas Mahendra, if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. Um, and of course, you know, everywhere you, s you look in the house, there's all kinds of interesting books that you can buy and see. So the last part of the library that I want to show you is, for me, my million dollar workstation. It's not a million dollars, but God knows I put a lot of money into it. Well, probably not a lot of money that, that you would think, because I'm very good at finding deals, but it is quite worthwhile. Again, the big thing is that when you're gonna sit down and work, it's just like being an athlete, right? You wanna invest in good tools. Invest in good tools, right? Don't buy a crappy chair or a crappy desk, right? I know some people don't wanna spend the extra money, but believe me, there's plenty of you that I know are spending money on like really stupid things on the weekends. Spend it in something that's gonna be important to you. This is where I make money, right? So I, it has to be good. So first thing is this Herman Miller uh, embodied chair. Um, this is the Bentley of all chairs, right? This is a $2,000 chair that I bought for under $500 because I'm really good at finding deals. Um, so the nice thing about this chair is that there's a lot of ways where you can adjust it, right? And if you see on the back, it's got really good lumbar support. Goes back and forth really nicely. And again, I can, I can, I can customize this to however I want, right? So this is the first part of this. Again, if you look on the floor here, there's books, right? I have this little roller thing for my feet that I can play with, right? And and then let me tell you a little bit about the about the desk. So when it comes to desk, I love design. So I kind of combined. If I have these sort of earthy tones of woods, I kind of wanted to contrast that with sort of this cool uh, uh, gray and white look. So this is kind of like a dinner placemat, uh, place but then I have this nice sort of fake leather mouse pad. Um, buy one of these, this is a good good thing to have. It's for wrist support so you don't ha hurt your wrists. And again, I have like this concrete slab that I got from Home Depot and I put my Mac on, but it just makes everything look good. One thing you notice is that this lamp and that light up there, they're all controlled by Hue uh, light bulbs, which means that those are smart light bulbs. So every morning at 5 a.m., they start to come on little by little, and so that way when I walk in the room, the, the room is lit and I start to wake up. Um, this is probably the dumbest thing that I bought, but it's actually incredibly well worth it. This is a $90 mug, all right? It is insane, I know. The reason why it's a $90 mug is that this mug is a smart mug, because I realized when I'm drinking coffee throughout the morning and through, throughout the day, how many times I get up from my desk and I go to the microwave and heat some, heat up the coffee and come back. I know many of you will say, well, why don't you just buy one of those hot heat plates? Unfortunately, those things don't warm the coffee really well. So this thing is temperature controlled with my smartphone. It's worth every penny if you drink coffee. So, and then throughout my, 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 uh, my desk, you know, I have things to make my day enjoyable while I'm working. So for one, you know, use good tools, like I always say. So this is karst stone paper. These are uh, notebooks that are actually made out of stone, right? They're about $20, $30. The paper is really nice quality everything, and it's fun. It's fun to write on things like this. And then of course, when it comes to writing, I'm really big into pens. So of course, I have some great pens here. My father's Mont Blanc, which I really love to use. And then these ones. These are, I think, one of the best pens you can buy. They're $20 on Amazon. This is a Swiss pen, it's called Caron de Ash. If you look in the, in the show notes below, I'll leave a link to this. But I love using pens like this, and of course in here, I have a variety of pens and things to use throughout the day. Now, 
The other thing is that this desk is no ordinary desk. This is a standing desk, of course, because you know you want different uh, levels to your desk when you work, right? You don't want to be sitting down all day long. So in the afternoon, rather than having more coffee, you know, I'll go for a walk and then I'll transition into standing mode, right? And again, the nice thing about this is that you're able to stand and work from it. Um, you know, I have good lighting here, a nice camera. And of course, back here, which you didn't see, is this really fantastic painting of this matador. Let me lower this down a little bit. Um, and this is a painting that I got from, again, another antique store. Again, I like to be surrounded by beautiful art. Um, on my desk, again, I have other books, you know, so when I want to take a break, I read books based on the problems I'm trying to solve to give me great ideas. So I'm reading uh, Traversing the Traction Gap by Bruce Cleveland. This is a fantastic book, highly recommended. And then uh, Mark Roberge, who is a CRO, former CRO of HubSpot, he wrote a new book, but this is an ebook. I, it was so good that I actually went and printed it out. It's called The Science of Scaling. Um, you know, and the other thing I have here is uh, my uh, late mentor, Chris Sells. He did a LinkedIn post about the 10 disruptive technology rules he follows for early stage leaders. And I have this here on my desk to kind of always uh, remind me of what I'm working towards. So that is my library. I hope you've enjoyed it. Drop a link, you know, link in the comments. So that's my uh, tour of my library. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, like go ahead and drop a question in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Take care for now. Bye.